All right, hi everybody, I'm Kelly Montanero, and I'll be talking about integrated ecosystem assessments and how they can be used to improve resource management. So integrated ecosystem assessments, or IEAs, are a NOAA-wide initiative. Um, it's an approach to ecosystem-based management that incorporates all components of the ecosystem, including humans, into the decision-making process. Uh, so this is a NOAA-wide initiative but it's scalable and specific to specific regions. Our region is the Gulf of Mexico, and it's also interdisciplinary and interline office, which is definitely a strength of the program, uh, with the leadership for OAR headed up at AOML. So what is an IEA? This is our loop to give you an idea of the process. Um, again, it's an approach that uses diverse interdisciplinary data to make decisions. It's modular, scalable, and iterative, uh, again, it's national, but can be scaled regionally or smaller. And the goal is to provide assessments for multiple ocean use sectors. Uh, so again, we're the Gulf of Mexico headed up here at AOML. Uh, we've got four focal areas, sediment diversions in Louisiana, support for the Gulf of Mexico Fishery Management Council in general, uh, community resilience to red tide in Southwest Florida, as we just heard about from Dr. Kelbel, and our work assessing ecosystem condition in the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary, which I'll now be talking about. All right, so what have we been doing in the Keys? Um, so NOAA's IEA program has been partnering with the Office of National Marine Sanctuaries to advance the science behind sanctuary condition reports and management plans. This has been a really great partnership to incorporate an existing management body and process with the IEA approach. Um, so first we work to identify indicators that fit the sanctuary condition report format and then obtain data sets that apply to those indicators. Uh, the sanctuary condition report is a tool that all sanctuaries in the system use to assess status and make updates to management for each sanctuary when necessary. So our process to identify indicators was a vetted quantitative and qualitative approach centered around an expert workshop that we hosted down in the Keys uh, about a year ago. Um, couldn't have done it without the input of a lot of experts that participated and also helped us obtain those same data sets for each indicator. Uh, and we had OML scientists participate in that workshop as well, which was really great. Uh, from those data sets, including six provided by OML scientists, we were able to analyze the status and trends of these selected and vetted indicators per the same sanctuary condition report format. So here's a timeline of our work. Uh, the sanctuary has been in a long process of updating their management plan. When new leadership came into the sanctuary, we partnered with them to use the IEA approach to select these indicators and provide information for their management plan. Um, information from our indicators was able to be used for the draft environmental impact statement that was used to update the management plan. Um, and our indicators were also used to brief the sanctuary advisory council meetings this past summer. So this process has led us to having our suite of indicators. We've got 56 indicators and sub-indicators that are now analyzed uh, within six categories per the condition report format. And that's thanks to the input of 32 experts that participated in our workshop. Couldn't have done it without them. It was a really great network of scientists and management partners from all different groups here in South Florida. So I've just got a couple of key indicators to show you. Um, total registered vessels in Monroe County, which is where the Florida Keys are, was selected as an indicator of human activities. You can see a huge drop relevant to the recession and recovery in the past five years. It's indicated by that blue bar. A uh, similar trend in total commercial fishing trips out of the Florida Keys, not quite as extreme, but again, recovering in the past five years overall drop in stony coral live tissue area, unfortunately, throughout the Florida Keys. However, we see a positive trend in the number of households that are connected to the central sewer system in the Florida Keys, which are, you know, islands. So that's actually really good for water quality. Uh, so we're really pleased that our suite of indicators and our process has been adopted by a number of partners. Uh, again, we told you about how it was incorporated in the sanctuary management plan, how we continue to support that process. Uh, we're supporting the update of the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary Condition Report. And this process is also being transitioned to other sanctuaries in the system, which is really great. Um, and we're also dovetailing with status report efforts uh, done by federal partners, 
state partners and other academic efforts as well. So what is this project doing next? Uh, our next steps are threshold analysis or risk assessments, uh, creating an interactive web tool of the key indicators that's uh, visualization for stakeholders <laughs> or outreach by the sanctuary and accessible to everybody as a web tool. And again, we're supporting a full updated condition report for the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. And again, this process is being transitioned to other sanctuaries in the system as well, which is great. So in summary, the work that we're doing, IEA is really you know, good at providing the best science for management decisions. Uh, it's great because it's interdisciplinary, interline office, and is able to support sustainable blue economy via preservation and enjoyment of our National Marine Sanctuaries. Our process has helped in not only looking at status and trends, but also in looking at ways to make better decisions and supporting these research man or resource managers as well. Thank you.